Welcome back to another episode of The Late Night Brew, where we talk the brews first and then get around to the business second. Name is Rob Bucktonica, also known as Buck. And today on the show, we have Lee Foster talking Symantec support. But first, the important bit. Lee, what, what, what's your drink of choice this uh, afternoon, evening? Good day, Buck. Good to speak to you, mate. Uh, look, today, it's for me, it's, uh, it's usually my... Every other day, it's either espresso martini or some fine champagne. So today, it's espresso martini for me. Keeps oh. me on my toes and keeps me moving. <laughs> Nothing like both being awake and sauced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's it's good. It's good. It's it's, it's something that's quite new to me in the last sort of eighteen months. But it's uh, yeah, mate. It's when I'm when I'm when I need that motivation, to get up and go. That's uh, that makes me get up and go. <laughs> Definitely. I am drinking. It's a blood orange pale ale. Uh, from Sleepy Dog Brewery. It is it's pretty good. That looks awesome, mate. Yeah. yeah. Sleepy, sleep, sleepy Dog. Sleepy Dog. And, and my <laughs> dog is sleeping just, just off screen. He's he's passed out. He ate dinner, and now it's time for that post-dinner nap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. There's a fantastic craft beer from the UK called, it's actually, I don't think it's called craft beer anymore, called Old Speckled Hen. See if you can, cool. uh, see, if you, see if you can find that one time and give that a try. Let me know whether it's a love or loathe. That's a deal. I, I will absolutely do that. So Symantec, they've they've definitely went through a uh, bit of a change recently, getting acquired by Broadcom. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's uh, you know, as, as, as you know, Buck, from our time together, you know, I've been around Symantec a lot of years from 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 in the UK and EMEA, and I'm moving to Australia for the last ten years. So I've seen Symantec go through a lot, you know, making acquisitions themselves and growing exponentially. And then now, yes, this acquisition by Broadcom and Symantec maintaining its name within Broadcom, but, you know, Symantec Enterprise Division is what it is now, and the consumer business being Norton LifeLock. So it's kind of like the same setup of what Symantec was, but Broadcom have just sucked it into their machine and and sort of narrowed its focus. So it's going to be – it's been interesting to see what they've done and what they're doing. Um, I think there's a lot, lot more interesting stuff to come as to what they're going to do and how they're going to go about it. Yeah. So, how does that relate to their support, which is what we're talking about now? Yeah. Look, it's um, as I said, interesting, right? So, Symantec over the years um, developed their support offering from being a number of support centers. One of which, globally, was actually in North Sydney in Australia, um, which housed a, a lot of level two and level three and backline engineers. So, quite a powerhouse. Mm. Um, and then they sort of moved through to sort of business critical support. And as most big vendors, they started to push that support offshore more, um, which kind of, if you like, depreciated the value of the offering, the support offering. It's still there, but it sort of got dispersed and business critical support. So uh, over the years, there's been a number of different support iterations and offerings. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Buck, what we're seeing now is pretty much that Semantic Enterprise Division have kind of refocused their their overall client structure, right? So, um, and I'll answer the the support thing directly in a few minutes, but fundamentally what Broadcom have done is said, look, we need to make some savings in this business. We want to make it more efficient and flow. Broadcom is a you know mega billion dollar business. So we're effectively, the first cost saving we're going to make is we're going to reduce the sales staff significantly globally, right? Because there's no desire for Broadcom and Semantic Enterprise to acquire new business, right? right. They're core. Their core business count, Buck, is is around 2,000 clients, and they're all they're all high end clients with significant revenues attached. So Broadcom's focus that they now call core business to them is that top 2,000 or so clients, where they're focusing everything that they have, all of their resources within that client base, right? And those clients will still get access to what they've been used to, premium support, elevated support, and and so on. Um, but outside of that core is where the challenge is. Right from a support yeah. perspective. Okay, and, so and that's, that's where uh, the the offering that really you're you're the the front runner for that, aren't you? In in a sense, Sarah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Look, it's um as I said, knowing you know being working from on the client side, where I've actually had to consume Semantic products and and work with support, and then in the vendor actually working for Semantic, and then now working at Incentra as part of the crew working with our guys, accessing that support and working with partners and clients, right? So, you know, outside of that semantic core business, they have two yeah. more levels. You know, one is the digital business, which is kind of the next wave down, which is thousands of clients. And then beyond that or below that, probably beyond, not below, is thousands and thousands of what they call commercial 
clients, the smaller clients that have bits and pieces of Symantec, right? So those guys um, at the moment are, are unable to get access to any level of support from, from Broadcom Symantec Enterprise. So other than the essential support that they have to buy when they buy product, which is your standard product support to be able to get uplift and upgrades and you know access to software and so on, there's no premium support offering for them, right? So there's nowhere for them to go. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, that's a... so it's a challenge, right? And that's why I said it's challenging times for the market and for the consumer world and clients around Broadcom and semantic support because for all intents and purposes, they've got a vendor saying, goodbye, we don't can't look after you anymore. Yeah, you know, they've got thousands, and, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of products, right? So that, that got us to thinking internally, Buck, as to what does that mean? Like, how can we help? What can we do around support? So, you know, to answer your question more directly, you know, we've, we've, we've sort of pulled together um, all of our resources, all of the technical people that we have and had a, you know, a whole lot of conversations around what, what can we do in, the, in and around support to help these clients in this period. Uh, but we have a support offering that is there to help in that instance. Yeah. And I mean, your your experience of being both the, the the client side of consuming their product and working with them probably gives you a pretty uh, unique ex- experience for you, especially with their support um, and kind of how to go forward with that too. Yeah, look, the most critical thing with, with any vendor and any vendor's product and support is things go wrong, right? They do right. go wrong. It's just the way it is. It's the nature. That's why. That's why that's software why we vendors. Have a job. <laughs> that's why we have a job exactly, right? <laughs> and that's why you know engineering exists. That's why they spend billions of dollars in R and D and everything else. But things go wrong, and and clients get that, right? So so there's there's there's, there's a couple of challenges. As winds blowing through the office. There's a couple of challenges in that clients need confidence in the product that they purchase, and typically they look to the vendor to get that confidence, even yeah. if that's just. If it's, I can I call Buck? I just need to talk to Buck. Look, I'm, I'm considering doing this. Is it a smart idea? And There's you might be, are you out of your mind? You know, why would you do that? They, they just need that relationship, right? Now that at the moment and for the foreseeable future, that doesn't exist, right? So clients are nervous, you know, about the, the oh, vibe, yeah. the products and the future, right? So therein exists a gap and, and an area whereby, you know, Incentra's model, a part of what we do for the channel is we, we've always done from day one pre-sales at no cost to the channel, right? So in a typical opportunity, um, we need the client or a partner needs to some help with solutioning for an outcome. For the partner, we would do pre-sales at no cost when it's qualified, right? That hasn't changed and it's not going to change, right? So if you think from a semantic support perspective, when you've got that client that's like, I need to call Buck, I need to, I need this person I can call yeah. just to put my mind at ease or bounce an idea off we can be that right for that client through the partner and through the channel right so that's one area for example Rob uh, where that really does add value to a client and help them still feel that they have that connection although we're not the vendor the fact that we are and have been year on year Symantec services partner of the year and still the go-to professional services partner for Symantec it's as good as you know in our opinion Right. It's that, you know, if nothing else, like you said, you can call someone to, to be able to answer your question confidently, even yeah. even if it is, I'm not sure, let me go look that up for you and, and get back to you uh, on that. Yep. So in in that, that seems like a good of a segue as any of uh, what 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 does that incense a service surrounding Symantec support look like? Cool, great question, and thanks for asking that, mate. That's um, that's uh, now, I've think, now I've got to actually go think about it, which is great. Um, so yeah, look, typically some support is usually sold as as a contract or service credits or many different ways to buy support, right? And so typically right. from Symantec, someone would buy support. It's on a contract. It usually co-terminates with their license, and and they get access to support for the duration, right? Our our service is not that. Right. What our service is, is, is aims to be a lot more flexible for the reasons we've just some of the reasons we've just covered. And that is that we want clients to be able to think about the support offering as more than just a telephone number to call. Yeah. Right? So it, the service itself is 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 consumed in, in block hours. So it's a pay up front service um, and, 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 and calling as being transparent as it can be. It's not a 24 seven follow to sign support 
model like you would right. get from say the old school service. business critical support you know, or managed service. That's a, a different conversation. What it is though, is whereby where you would normally call a semantic support number, you would go through levels of support. You'd log a case with someone, you know, on support desk, you do triage and that takes time. Then it go to level one and level two and level three and so or on. Right? Our way up, Microsoft, yeah. uh, whatever yeah. vendor has that same different level. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So the intent of this service is it's high value um, in as much as when you buy the hours, which are available in multiples of blocks, you buy your hours. And then when you make a call into our support desk, you're effectively getting passed straight to consulting level engineers, right? Which you can, you know, you can almost draw a line through consultant level engineers to almost backline engineering in, you know, they're not exactly the same. Backline engineering is software coders, you know, but consultants are delivering products every day, right? So right. you're going straight to these guys. You're not going through all the triage levels, okay? So in, in that respect, you get access to someone straight away that can help, right? So quicker return or bang for buck on the hours that you purchase. It's a it's a it's a way to give that. Um, it's the best way to phrase it. The, the expansion to your IT group of, hey, this is a kind of a, a, a tacked on tier three semantic support that if you can't figure it out, call them. We basically already have tier three now looking into the issue. Yeah. 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 So in that that's one of the core ways in which the hours can be purchased. So an example may be a client is no longer uh, no longer entitled to premium support. They're exposed. They need some support. And um, there's typically one of three scenarios, right? The first one is we just need access to support in the way that we had before. We have issues we need resolved. Can you help? Yes. Yeah. Got the hours. You call down on the hours. The hours are consumed as in, in the time it takes to resolve the issue in usual terms, in hours and out of hours and so on. The second area, though, they may need assistance is that, hey, Buck, can I call Buck? I need to speak to Buck. I need assistance. I need help about uh, the product that I'm, you know, considering integrating with Symantec and so on, which I see as more of being the SC type role, the systems engineer that they would have been used to when they had support from Symantec. Right. right so that, that's the hours are used in a slightly different capacity where they can say, look, can I go work with my partner and what would be a, an Incentra SE to work with me on solutioning for my outcome? So now I have confidence that somebody that is a services partner of Symantec under Broadcom knows what they're talking about, works with these products every day, can work with me and my partner to architect and solution the outcome for me, right? And they can consume those hours in the same way, right? Yeah. Um, so it's not so much support, it's it's used in a different way to help solution for something else. Real bad one, design, build it in, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that kind of comes into the third point, and a great point, Buck. The the third area that they, the hours can be used is where you have a client that is, look, given what's been going on with Broadcom, we've already made a commitment, we've already made a decision that we are going to be moving off of this platform. We just don't know how to. Right? We don't have enough internal IP or internal knowledge on what the semantic product and, port and portfolio and configuration means to us in order for us to make really effective decisions about how we move away. So yeah. to your point around assessment and architecture and roadmap, they can leverage that from Incentra in the block hours in the form of our architect as a service, right? So whereby they can say, can I have someone come work with me over a period of one, two, three days? I've got a balance of hours or I can buy more to come and help me define a roadmap to move away from this product if that's what I've chosen to do. Yeah. Right? And in other partner, an example could be, that they've already made some decision to move things into Azure and already looking at the Microsoft 365 and the security offerings within Microsoft. How do I leverage more of that and move away from Symantec, for an example? Right? So right. That they can leverage those hours to get to that as an outcome. So it's a lot more flexible. And although it's not 24-7, 365, follow the sun support and the, and the value that you get from, you know, you can call anybody anytime, this service brings to bear three different facets that can help clients in different ways on a block hours pay up front basis. Yeah, and they, they they choose how they get to use it, where they use it, you know, how we Absolutely. can consume it. Yeah, it's it's a really strong value add and uh, bringing up architecture as a service is, a, is a, another episode for sure, because that is a awesome uh, offering in my opinion when I learned about that, that was, that was great. So that yeah, is- 
Definitely I think, extra I, dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um look, I mean, at the end of the day, it's what we've been known for since we started the business, right? When it was just the three of us. Um we've been renowned in the industry for, you know, early days from very first from our very first products and projects was delivering exceptional outcomes whereby we would go the extra mile, really put in the effort to understand, but it's not necessarily is this the right product? What's the right outcome? You know, why why are you doing this project? And what's why is this important? You? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What what why is this important? Why is this rather than how hey, you need to buy this product and do it this way? Um, which was which was one of our core values, daring to be different from day one. Lots of other people that we work with just said, no, look, they bought this product, we just need you to implement it. We're like, no, that's not going to get them. That's not going to give them an outcome. That just gives them another product they don't know how to use. Yeah, right? versus the value you add up and then you've got this piece. Exactly. Of what do I do with it? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, guess, I guess one one last core thing to call out about the, the offering is it's not to be used or it's not a mechanism to access professional services at a cheaper cost. Okay? It's, right. Uh, whatever comes out of you know the third option, we want to look at ways to move away from the semantic stack because of whatever reason we've decided, rightly or wrongly, um, whatever roadmap we come up with to assist them with that is seen as a professional services roadmap that the partner may choose to do, the client could do themselves, or they may choose to leverage us at Incentra to provide them a fixed price statement of work and quote to help them do that transition. Right. Well, we have uh, definitely run the course. Lee, I appreciate you taking the time uh, this afternoon, evening to have a chat and a brew with us and talk about semantics. So again, thank you very much. Absolute pleasure, mate. If you want to know more, uh, go ahead and check us out. And if you have any questions, never, never be afraid to reach out. In the description of the video, there's a link to the landing page for the support offering where you can you can look at more about you know everything we've discussed, how the service is constructed, how it can be consumed and so on. Definitely. We'll make sure that you have more information than you know what to do with. <laughs> All right. Cheers, Bob. Quick talking to you, mate. Cheers, mate. Have a, have a good rest of your day.